This video is about um, poor idle on EFI'd cars. Um, it's a 97 VS Holden Commodore. This thing actually runs pretty well. Um, running shot of the motor. Bosch alternator. Um, Serpentine belt system. Let me just turn that off so you can use And um, it's got one of those. It's actually a GM um, cold air intake. It's a, it's a genuine General Motors item. Um, came with another car I had. I think it was a supercharger V6 or something. Um, the motor in question is a 3.8 litre, what they call an Ecotec. V6 started fitting T clamps. Um, they don't have a slot for a Phillips head screwdriver, so you just use like a like a small socket. T clamps are wonderful. They grip the hose effectively, tightly, and they have a really large clamping area. The large clamping area means that it's less likely to damage the hose and more likely to seal. Um, one of my, my one of my opinions that isn't necessarily well loved is that worm drive hose, hose clamps are a piece of shit. The reason is because you know using a flat blade screwdriver, the screwdriver is always going to slip out. Um, they look they don't look professional as far as I'm concerned. And for an extra two dollars, you get these really nice T-bolt hose clamps. These came from an irrigation shop. They are. Norma brand and I uh, highly recommend getting them. They're very good hose clamps. They're ten times the clamp that what they came out with. Um, one day this whole thing's going to happen. So anyway, if you've got an EFI'd car that doesn't run nice and smooth on, on idle and tends to stall when you put it in gear or turn the steering wheel or put on the air conditioning, there could be two problems that it's got. Now, the first, most likeliest problem is this. This um, throttle plate um, has what they call a base idle um, clearance and um, it allows a small amount of air to pass and by, oh, or pass through the, the throttle plate when it's in the idle position. Now, a lot of people adjust the base idle, which is um, there's a screw, there's a, a bolt down there. You can't really. No, hang on, where is it? Here it is. It's a set screw. There's a set screw there. This set screw's actually got some thread lock on it. It's a white stuff. Um, if your idle's low, don't adjust it. Just leave it alone. It's factory set. They don't need to be touched. They're not even, yeah. The um, idle speeds done by the ECU or computer, if you want to call it that, is not designed to be modified or you know adjusted. It's not meant to be, and it's incorrect. And nine times out of ten, there's only ever two problems with it. One, and this is the first thing you should do if it's not idling properly. This is the first thing you should do to the car. Any EFI car, it doesn't have to be one of these, whatever. Um, clean, the th clean the throttle body out. Now, the best way of doing it is a toothbrush and a probably toothbrush and kerosene or whatever, or toothbrush and petrol, and then wipe it out with a rag. I don't recommend using any decoding or, you know, fancy spray cans. Carby clean is always good, but you don't need it. And um, sometimes they have a hose down there, which you can probably see. Um, for the crankcase ventilation system. If you go spraying a heap of carby cleaner in there, it's going to end up in the crankcase of the motor. So anyway, that's the first thing you should do. The second thing is this little guy here, which is an idle speed control valve. Now, if you pull these two screws out, um, often as not, the valve itself, if, if the throttle body is really dirty, the valve itself will be as well. So it's not a bad idea to pull the screws out and there's going to be an o-ring or something between there and there 
and I recommend you to clean it out. Um, a small brush and petrol is probably the best way of going. Carby cleaner can be, but I keep it away from the valve because it's, you know, yes, it, it should be fuel stable, fuel tolerant, whatever you want to call it, but I, I like to use petrol. It's safer than carby cleaner in, in this case. Um, so anyway, after you've done that, um, you know, give it a start. It'll probably run like crap for a couple of minutes. Well, well shouldn't be that long, but it, it'll probably run like crap for 30 seconds to a minute. Because if you've got, you know, if you've got quite a lot of petrol in the system, like in the actual intake, it's it's not going to like it. It's going to run rich. It'll be sucking in crap. Now, the idea is to keep the dirt and the petrol out of the um, manifold or plenum chamber. This is a plenum chamber. Um, it's designed to have really consistent airflow to, to all of the cylinders. That's why it's designed like that. Okay, so you put it back together and it's idling, it's idling well. Um, it, may it may idle a bit funny or whatever for a while because it has to relearn the fact that it doesn't have to compensate with the idle speed control valve as much as it was. And um, typically this problem affects fuel injected cars because um, See, unlike a carby, they don't have any fuel going past a butterfly valve. In carby cars, butterfly and the throat of the carby is always clean. And the reason for that is because you've always got um, basically petrol cleaning it out every time you run the car. These things don't work that way. And the positive crankcase ventilation system, which is essentially an anti-pollution device, um, well, originally that's why it was was put on there so you're not getting um, oil vapour out into the atmosphere it's sucked into the motor and burnt the problem with that is when it goes past the throttle plate it um, tends to make it dirty so that's the most common reason why they don't idle properly um, now if you've got an EFI'd car and the idle's high and unstable um, it means it's compensating for something now they have an airflow meter, which is there. Now, not all injected cars do. Um, there are two ways of working out how much air is going into a motor. Now, you take the throttle position um, and the manifold absolute pressure, which is actually down there. That's the manifold absolute pressure sensor. Um, you take the engine speed the air temperature and you can calculate the amount of air going in. Now the other way of doing it is the way this thing does it. This thing has an airflow meter. Um, there are various names for it, probably all of them are correct. Um, the most common terminology for this meter is a mass airflow meter. Now the important thing to note about this one is it's not very big. This is a hot wire mass airflow meter. From memory it is a three element sensor meaning it has three hot wires in it. I think I think that's right. Um, they also employ, that's the um, air temperature sensor. Well, I'm not going to pull it out because it's got clips on the other side you've got to squeeze in. So anyway, yeah, that's the second way of doing it. You actually measure the amount of air going in versus calculating it. Now Cars like this, EB Falcon 9092, um, they calculate it. They don't have an airflow meter. Um, in case you're wondering what my opinion is, which system's better, don't really think there's any difference. Um, the Falcon's so good at calculating it that I've never really, never thought that it was deficient whatsoever. Um, measuring it can be better if you yeah, let me think. I uh, think if you're running a turbocharger, but you can turbo the Falcon, but yeah, I think for some reason you're better off measuring it than calculating it with a turbo because it tends to screw with the um, map sensor. But in any case, you've got a dyno tuner if you're turboing it. Now, I've sort of gone off on a tangent. The, um, the, the second idle problem with high idle, it's not stable, like rough idle, is usually a vacuum leak and the reason why I've explained um, the airflow sensors and all that 
is because it, with the manifold absolute pressure sensor down there, this thing can tell if there's more air getting into the motor than there should be. So um, this is a fairly common place for a vacuum leak to occur between the, the little seal, between the one-way valve and the brake booster. Now um, this booster is actually plastic, so it can't rust, but the earlier Commodores used a, a steel cased booster. Now what happens is, on the steel cased ones, is when the master cylinder seal starts leaking, and you might not even notice it because it's only a small leak, it'll take the paint off where the push rod seal and the booster is, and um, it'll rust out eventually. Brake fluid um, is what's called ascorbic. I think I've pronounced that correctly. It, um, it absorbs water from the atmosphere. And um, water plus the paint that the brake fluid eats away on the steel boosters, it'll rust out where that seal goes between the um, push rod and the, and the booster housing, and it'll leak um, vacuum. So if it starts doing that and your master cylinder's cactus, often these things will blow smoke and people condemn engines thinking the rings are gone, but it's actually not the rings, it's actually burning brake fluid. I've seen that happen on quite a few cars. People are ready to change the motor and it's only just a brake booster. Um, the other thing is, where these little hoses go on for the um, heating controls and stuff, they tend to come off. That'll cause a vacuum leak. Um, see, I'd be checking these hoses here. That, that's the hose that goes to the brake booster. Because of the heat, they get hard. Now, here's something I didn't realise. This one's a tiny bit loose. The hose is still soft. It's still serviceable. So what I'm going to do is change this um, little spring clip for a proper hose clamp. And, um, no, I'm not going to use a T-clamp because I'm trying to be a tight ass at the moment and not spend too much money. So I'm going to recycle a worm drive clamp that in my box of um, clamps and stuff. So anyway, I, this is um, one video of, of um, fuel injected maintenance. I'm happy to do other videos if that's what's wanted. And um, yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, if anybody wants me to, to do a video on something that they want to know about, I'm happy to do it. Um, yeah, I'll have a good day.